This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make your next move with Squarespace. I'll be honest, I think my photography needs a lot of work at the moment. I think there's this assumption, if I'm on a platform like YouTube and I have a channel that's ostensibly about photography, or if I'm on a platform like Instagram and I have a large following, it must mean I'm a great photographer, or at least that I think I'm a great photographer. But I'll be the first to admit, I think I have a long way to go. And this isn't traditional British self-deprecation. I think it's an honest assessment of where I am at the moment with my photography. And I'm not giving myself a hard time for it. I do a lot of different things. I make videos for this channel and I write books now. So it's no wonder that sometimes some things will flag behind others. But I've admitted to myself recently that my photography really needs more growth at this point. So why do I say that I have a long way to go as a photographer? I'll be honest and say that I have a lot of technical skills that I've built up over my photography career to date and I can take a serviceable image in most circumstances. In fact, over my career to date, I've taken a lot of images that I'm really proud of. So in that sense, I don't see myself as a bad photographer at all. But when I look at my bookshelf and see the heights photography can reach in the works of the greats, and when I take a glance at the work my friends are doing in releasing their first monographs, that is when I have to admit that I'm not ready for a proper monograph yet. And that's because there's a key difference between their work and mine which leaves me trailing behind. And that is creating bodies of work rather than single images. About a year ago, I put out a video talking about Instagram and social media and how they tempt us to shoot for the single popular image. But I wanted to grow up as a photographer and start to go out and create more narrative, longer form photography. Sounds good, right? But when I looked around at my own work, I realized that I didn't have any work like that. I hadn't created bodies of work yet and I needed to make a plan. The truth is that right from the beginning I wanted to be a more narrative photographer. I had dreams of becoming something like a National Geographic staff photographer. I basically wanted to be Sean Penn in The Secret Life of Walter Mitty, being commissioned to go around the world, live out of bad hotels, to create compelling photo stories that everyone else around the world could ingest over their morning coffees as they flick through a magazine. But that sort of photographic work just doesn't exist in the same way that it used to because gone are the era of the staff photographers for big magazines because we now firmly live in a new era of crowdsourced imagery, which means that it's harder than ever to get somebody to commission you to create narrative bodies of photography work and harder still to get paid well for it. However, I realized that I don't have to wait to get hired or paid to do that kind of work. If I want to use my camera to create narrative bodies of work, and I believe that's the next challenge that I need to give myself on my photographic journey, what am I waiting for? So this year, things are changing because I've decided to start producing my own magazine. For the past five years, I've been bringing out these collection books, which is 90 images in each book, but it was just a case of going around and whatever I happened to see that year would go into this book. It was all driven by chance and there was no real direction to them in terms of story or theme or message. Then just over a year ago, I brought out The Meaning in the Making, which to be fair, did feel like a proper body of work. It had a clear message and a theme and there was lots of narrative in it and storytelling, but in this case, it was just writing and there were no images to speak of. So as I was thinking about next steps for my photographic journey and how to grow myself up as a photographer, it became clear that what I needed to do was bring together those two sides, the images that I was taking with the writing that I was doing, and then to create bodies of work which actually said something and had a clear message. So after five years of the collections, going forward, I'm switching gears and I'm going to be producing a magazine. And this is the first edition in hopefully what will be a long running series. And I've called the magazine Parable. One, because it's a little nod to my past with the church, but two, because I like the definition of parable, which is an analogy or a simple story offered to illustrate a moral or spiritual truth. So the approach I'm taking with these is very similar to the videos I produce here on the philosophical playlist on this channel. And if you've watched videos like Protect Your Highlights or Embrace Your Shadows, where I talk about a photographic concept, but then use it as an analogy to talk about an approach to life in general, you'll already have a good idea of what the flavor of this magazine will be. This first edition is on window light. Let me get the practical details of this magazine out of the way before I try and apply it to your journey. I'm hoping to bring out at least two editions every year, probably more most years, and it will be offered in two versions. One is this, which will be the printed version. It is a large A4 size. It's printed on the same paper that I used to use for the collections, which is quite a nice, 
thick, lush, environmentally friendly, uncoated paper because some of my favorite magazines like Serial and Rucksack are printed on something similar and I love the feel in the hand but just be aware that it mutes down a lot of the tones in the images and it lifts the black to sort of a charcoal color. Those of you who've had the collections before in the past will know exactly what to expect. And then the second option for this magazine is going to be a digital version where you can go across to my website and you can download the PDF which you can enjoy on a phone or a tablet or a computer which will also come bundled with an MP3 file of me actually reading the magazine to you because I thought that might be fun while you're digitally flipping through. Even though having the physical printed magazine in my hand would always be my personal preference, the reason I'm offering this magazine digitally as well is because I know a lot of you have had issues, especially since Brexit and in EU countries, where you've been slammed with import duties with books coming in from the UK. So I thought I would produce this digital magazine so you have a way to get this in your hands without having that particular headache. I'll leave a link to the magazine down below if you want to go along and check it out. This switch in how I share my work is really my attempt to grow up as a photographer and to create those narrative bodies of work on my own steam without having to have someone else to hire me, where I take images, some old and some new, and a lot of writing around a particular theme to put across a body of work which actually says something. On my side, I'm really excited to have topics to shoot for. I already have about 30 folders on my desktop, each with a different theme idea. And some of those folders have images in them and some have none because I've never shot images around that particular theme, which means I'm sending myself out. I'm commissioning myself to go and collect a body of work around that particular theme. And it feels great to give myself some direction. It feels like I'm commissioning myself. I'm no longer going out there and taking the I'll just see what I see approach, although I will still do that because it's fun to do. But I'm now giving myself themes and stories to go and make bodies of work with and I'm teaching myself again how to be a good communicator with my photography as well, not just someone who creates aesthetically pleasing work. And I know that there are lots of other photographers out there who've been shooting the way that I have, just going out and capturing whatever I happen to stumble across on a day and making interesting, visually appealing images, but not necessarily having much to say or much of a theme to that work. There's nothing wrong with that, of course, and I'll still be shooting like that a lot because it's a great way to play and experiment and try out new things. But if you're feeling frustrated and stuck in your photography like I was and like, What's the point in this? What am I saying with this work? It just feels a little bit empty. Maybe it's time to give yourself a new challenge. Maybe you could give yourself the same challenge I've given myself. Maybe you could become your own magazine editor and you send yourself out on commissions to go and capture narratives and create bodies of work around particular subjects and theme to tell us visual stories. We don't have to wait for someone to come and hire us or offer us a lot of money to make the work we really believe in. We can do it right now on our own steam, especially if we think that it's going to move our photography in general forward. It will bring us a lot of joy in making that sort of work and a lot of fulfillment, but also we'll be creating bodies of work and teaching ourselves skills in that vein that we want to work that we'll be able to show as portfolios to those people who do hire for that kind of work down the road because we're proving that we do great work in that space. Do what I did to get started and create folders on your desktop with different themes that you would like to go out and collect photography around and then send yourself out with your camera to go and capture those visual stories to bring them back and to collate them to talk about the things that you really care about. If you find yourself really getting somewhere, you could start to release that work as a zine or a blog or a print series or you could just do it for yourself to develop your own photography, to teach yourself how to tell visual stories in sets of images, creating bodies of work, rather than just chasing after the popular single image. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this episode. If you need a new website or a domain, they're a fantastic option. I've used them myself as my website of choice for over a decade now. The main thing I need a website to do is to kind of get out of the way and push my work front and center so that's what looks good on that site, which is why I like a very minimal look to my website. Squarespace have a whole host of really tasteful templates put together by professional designers that are really, really easy to use. In the back end, you're just clicking and dragging in text blocks and photographs and videos, and it really does make sure that on the front end, everything is clean and minimal and laid out, and it's really your work that does the talking. Start your free trial today at squarespace.com and go to squarespace.com forward slash Sean Tucker to get 10% off your first purchase.